Mongolia, 75 million years ago, a land of vast sand dunes and scorching rock. A land that even the mighty dinosaurs struggle to conquer. Despite the harsh conditions, dinosaurs are still a common sight. Scratching out a living in an area where water and food are almost always in short supply. One of the best suited to these hot lands is the Oviraptor, Siddhapati. He is around the size of an emu or ostrich, and like them, he is covered in feathers, has a long neck and a powerful set of legs. Unlike them, however, he has a large tall beak with a powerful crushing bite that can break apart hard nuts and seeds. He also has long arms and fingers tipped with hooked claws, so he can grab and hold prey. Like most oviraptors, Siddhapati are omnivores, and will eat just about anything in these arid environments. Today he hasn't found any animals, so instead he feeds on some of the tough desert plants. They are spiky and have little nutrients, but the Siddhapati's beak grinds them down before swallowing, and just as these plants have evolved to retain as much water as possible, so have the animals that feed on them. The Siddhapati stands to his full height and sees a herd of Protoceratops in the distance. These small Ceratopsians travel in herds, with the adults protecting the young. The male considers hunting one of the smaller members of the herd, however despite being taller and faster than the Protoceratops, the herbivores are heavier than he is, and if he wasn't careful, they could break his thin bones relatively easily. Deeming it too risky, the large oviraptor heads back home. After a long walk, the male sees the series of boulders that are his shelter, but not just for himself. His mate also resides here, and while he has been out hunting, she has been laying over a nest of eggs. Siddhapati made for life, and every year they lay a clutch of eggs near the end of the dry season, so by the time the eggs hatch, the wet season will have begun. At least one of them will always stay by the nest while the other looks for food. Today, however, the male hasn't brought any extra food for his mate, so she'll have to go out immediately. The two communicate by snapping their jaws, creating a series of clacking sounds. This reaffirms their bond, and once the male stands behind the female, she gets up and walks away from the nest, and he takes her place. As the female stretches her leg in preparation for her own foraging, the male spreads the feathers on his wings out over their eggs in order to keep them shielded from the worst of the sun's heat. He will remain here till the female returns which could be days. Night comes and goes, and the male stays on alert, only resting for short periods. As the morning sun rises, he and his nest are protected from the sun by the large boulders on one side, though their protection will only last a few hours. This is why he chose this area, and because there are a few spiky bushes around for cover, and if things get desperate, the two Siddhapati can use them for food. As the male checks the temperature of his eggs, he hears footsteps amongst the rocks around him. They are barely audible, so whatever is making them must be light. There is a flash of feathers from behind the rocks, and the Siddhapati knows that there is some sort of dinosaur out there. The sound of scurrying continues, and it becomes obvious that there are two intruders. After a few minutes, they reveal themselves. A pair of velociraptors. The 1.5 meter predators are common in these areas. They may seem dangerous to the Siddhapati, but the opposite is actually true. The large oviraptor is easily capable of tearing these lightweight predators apart, as the velociraptor pair draw closer, darting in and out of cover. Siddhapati rises to his feet to get a higher view, and to be ready to defend his eggs, as they are what the small dromaeosaurs are after. The male loses track of one of the velociraptors, and the other begins to approach him directly, his eyes darting between himself and the eggs. He lets the small intruder get closer and closer, knowing that he is in a good position to defend his nest. When the velociraptor gets too close, however, the Siddhapati charges forward, holding his arms out to make himself look bigger, and letting out a harsh, bark-like set of calls. The Velociraptor retreats, running back the way it came, looking for cover. As it did, the other Velociraptor seized this moment, 
and darted out from behind the sitter party to grab an egg. It was fast on its feet, racing towards its target only slowing down right before the nest, so it could probably grab an egg in its jaws. But that was as far as it got, as just as the predator was opening its mouth, the sitter party's foot struck it on the side and sent it hurtling backwards into the dirt. The blow caved in the velociraptor's ribcage, and it struggled to breathe or get up, but in a flash the sitter party was on top of it. The overraptor delivered another deadly blow to the raptor's head, cracking it against the rocks. The sitter party didn't stop however, it kicked again, and again. Its victim was dead, but it kept viciously striking the body in anger. The other Velociraptor heard its partner perish, and ran for its life. After brutally killing the small dinosaur, the Sitter Party looked over the mangled body. Satisfied it was dead, but he wasn't done yet. The male picked the body up in his jaws, and walked over to one of the spiky plants. Like a modern day Shrike, the Sitter Party impaled the body of the Velociraptor on the long spikes, creating a morbid and harrowing visage. This serves two purposes. It keeps the body pinned so the Sitter Party can feed on it, and it serves as a warning to other Velociraptors that would smell the dead individual and know not to come here. The Sitter Party pulled bits of flesh from the impaled carcass, blood covering his face and feathers now looking far more like the ruthless hunter he was on the inside. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the funeral pyre overraptor, Siddhapati. Siddhapati was discovered in the Gobi Desert during an expedition by the American Museum of Natural History in 1993. The first remains found were eggs and nests, and were so well preserved that the embryos inside the eggs were preserved. Adult specimens would be found on the same expedition, in a location known as Ankylosaur Flats. It was a partial skeleton mostly comprised of ribs and limb bones. This became the holotype. A more complete skeleton would be found the following year, which had more of the skeleton including the skull. This one would receive the name Big Mama. A year later, a third skeleton would be found, laying over a nest. This one would be called Big Auntie. In 2001, the genus was given the name Siddhapati, meaning Funeral Pyre Lord, named after the Lord of Cemeteries, from Tibetan Buddhist folklore. Siddhapati is a theropod in the Ovaraptoridae family, and lived in what is now Mongolia and China, during the late Cretaceous between 75 and 71 million years ago. It was one of the largest overraptors, reaching between 2.5 and 3 meters in length, standing 1.7 to 2 meters tall, and weighing between 73 and 85 kilograms. It retains many of the physical features of its family, having a short skull with a beak, a long emu-like neck, compact body, elongated forelimbs with long fingers, and a short tail, while also having a covering of feathers. Its skull was short but tall, as it had a crest on top formed from the premaxilla and nasal bones that has been compared to the crests of cassowaries, though nowhere near as large, giving the skull a squarish appearance. Siddhapati had no teeth, instead it had a hard beak that was just as adept at tearing as it was crushing. It did, however, have a single tooth-like structure in the roof of its mouth that aided in biting. The whole skull is full of small openings that would have been filled with air sacs to make the skull lighter. Despite this, Siddhapati still had quite a powerful bite. A study of Ovaraptors done in 2022 found that it could bite down with a force of between 349 and 499 newtons. So what was it using these strong jaws on? Probably just about everything, as Ovaraptors are theorized to have been mostly omnivores for many years. Though its powerful bite force may have allowed it to take advantage of tough plants or nuts and seeds that other animals weren't able to. The head was on the end of a long neck, held in a rough S-shape, that was likely quite flexible, not too dissimilar from modern ratites. One thing that's often overlooked on Ovaraptors is how long their arms and fingers were, and Siddhapati was no exception. For a theropod, they were massive. Each finger was tipped with a large hook claw, 
and would have made it easy for Setter Party to manipulate objects like turning over rocks to look for food. As well as grasping small prey, such as smaller dinosaurs, which would include smaller species of Oviraptor. Once caught in its grasp, Cytopody could move around freely, or bite and feed on its prey. It should also be noted that Cytopody would have had long feathers on its arms, so much so that you would likely barely see the hands. More on that later. The tail is quite short for a theropod, but it is likely it didn't need a long tail because of its lightweight head and lean body. With that being said, the tail is quite muscular and had good flexibility. It also ended in a piga style, which is the fusing of the last few vertebrae of the tail. This is seen in modern birds that have large tail feathers, leading to the theory that if the arms and tail had feathers, it's likely the majority of the body also had them. With a strong and maneuverable tail, and lots of large feathers, scientists believe that Siddhapati may have used its tail in display, likely that males use them to show off to females during courtship. The individual Big Mama had a major break on her right ulma, leading to a prominent callus and possibly elongated groove over the injury, though this did heal, showing that it survived the injury, though it likely hindered the animal for many weeks. One of the most important finds involving Cytopati is how it helps shed more light on dinosaur nesting habits. As mentioned earlier, nests, eggs and embryos of this species have been discovered, including those that have individuals that died while brooding on them. Scientists know they were brooding because of the positions they were in. The eggs themselves are long and oval shaped, with the texture and shell structure similar to modern ratite eggs. These 18 cm long eggs were arranged in circles, and could number up to 22 eggs in a single nest. The nesting specimens had their arms and tails spread over the eggs in a position that would allow them to shield their eggs using the feathers on these areas, as well as those on its body. The nesting position is most like that of an ostrich, and that has helped better understand the relationship between modern birds and dinosaurs. It is also believed that oviraptors in general evolved longer and stronger feathers as they developed these nesting behaviours, to better protect their eggs from heat, cold and rain. Oddly, the skulls of two juvenile dromaeosaurs were discovered alongside the first found Cytopati nests. It is believed that these may have been raiding the nest and were likely killed by an adult Cytopati. Or, an adult Cytopati hunted them and brought them back to the nest as food. There is one other theory, that this is an example of nest parasitization, where an animal will lay its eggs in another species' nest so that its young will be raised by a different species. This is done by a few animals today, the best known modern example are the cuckoo bird family. The area that Siddhapati lived in ranged from semi-arid, to deserts, to even sand dunes, a tough environment to make a living. But from what we know, Siddhapati was one of the area's largest predators. Some species it lived alongside include coal, a silurosaur, minotaurosaurus, an ankylosaur, Khan, another oviraptor, and Almos, a troodon. Cytopati has become one of the best species to help understand dinosaur behaviour, and shows that these ancient animals were nesting and caring for their eggs, a behaviour that modern birds have carried on. How interesting that an animal that was the equivalent of a prehistoric ratite would act so much like their modern counterparts. Of course, Cytopati was probably much more ruthless than an ostrich, and was equipped to find and break open any food source that was available in its arid home. On a final note, if you haven't seen the short film simply titled Siddhapati, it's on YouTube and I strongly recommend it. But what do you think of Siddhapati? And for my question of the week, do large oviraptors like Siddhapati and Gigantoraptor frighten you? Or do you think they were basically big dumb chickens? Let me know what lesser known dinosaur you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.